So what's going on with you music-wise right now? Music-wise, I've been in a bit of a transition um, because I stepped away and wanted to get my education right. You went to Harvard? Yeah, yeah, still got two more years. Explain what the Harvard thing is exactly and, and the, the, the reasoning behind it. Oh man, shout out to my Harvard OPM 48 group. You know, um, Harvard has been something that I never dreamed of, by the way, coming from the South Bronx and never really taking a liking to school just because of the circumstances that I was in and I guess the circumstances that the teachers were in also. For me to be actually um, sitting amongst so many great people in my class, coming from where I come from on all circumstances, from my living circumstances where I grew up at to um, the circumstances of the educational system that I was, you know, uh, forced to be in because of where I lived. And, you know, my mother, my parents did a great job, but it still didn't change the system and, and the people that were surrounding those systems, you know, but that don't, that's not an excuse for me. I didn't want to use that as an excuse to, like, not go back and, 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 and tighten up and sharpen things up. The motivation of me going to Harvard was I've, I've been in a lot of big deals and I've changed a lot of big billion dollar companies um, just off of know-how and pulse and knowing what people like and having taste that I acquired from traveling. And I remember just sitting in meetings and these meetings would be because of me and I just didn't feel the proper respect because I couldn't really participate in the other language that was happening in the room. So it was almost like, okay, this is the rapper, but this is, you know. And, this is the real business, right? And this yeah. is the business. Yeah. And I was like, you know, okay, I started in rap, but, you know, since then I've, I've been diverse in, in many areas since then. But being that you have that RAP title it, in people's minds, it just freezes for some reason, they can't get past that. And so I was on a business trip and, and I was talking to one of my business partners on the plane and I was saying, look man, you know, I really wanna like get the language and the business that we're dealing with kind of down packed. I don't care if it's an online class, I don't care what I need to do, but I wanna go up in, in these meetings and I wanna really have the language down packed. And then it was referenced, you know, this Harvard class, the owner's class, being that I'm owning, you know, a few companies that I can, I can, you know, sign up for this. And I was like, well, and then I didn't, you know, the company had to be worth, you know, over 200 million. You know, they have different levels. You have one that's 10 million and you have another company that's over 200 million. And, um, you know, Monster happened to be worth over 200 plus, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I submitted it, they, they, the class was over book. You know, we got a bunch of no's, 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 no, no's. And, just kept doing and then I got the last minute and it's like the acceptance came through. I was like, it was like one of the deepest moments. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't cry, but I, just, I definitely, two came out my eyes that day. I was like, wow. The way the, way the class is set up, um, I'm in the class with owners from all over the world. You know, we have over 30 some countries in our class and um, you know, very successful people. It's about 180 of us. I'm the only person that come from where I come from, music, area, US, everything in my class. And um, it's just been a great networking system, you know, just to meet so many amazing people around the world that also have similar stories. You know what I'm saying? So what I learned from my class is that, you know, um, it's not all pretty everywhere. You know, like I know people that started, you listen to the stories of the people that's super successful, like it's not always handed down you know, it's not always what you think it is. You know, people start out delivering milk and other people started out homeless and other people started out with $15. They might have $15 in their pocket. And, you know, you hear these transitional stories and they're inspiring. And I'm like, well, man, like, you know, we all got the same story kind of in here, you know? And what I would do is I would take out different countries to dinner and just get to know more about their culture. And, you know, um, nobody knew I was Swiss Beats. I was Kasim Dean in my class until my wife showed up to school and then in my car, <laughs> it was over after that. It was like, but it was cool because it was towards the end because I wanted to focus so it came, it was, she came towards the end, but I was already cool with everybody. I already had, you know, we was already having. So, so no one recognized you as Swiss in that class? 
nah. The way the OPM program is, the OPM is, you know, it's, it's the owner's program, so everybody run companies. So what we do is we take the intel that we get from our professors and we go apply it to our businesses. And then so now when we come back, so I go back in March, and when I start my semester in March, I gotta bring all of the data and, and, and you know, I gotta at least raise the company like by 5%, and I gotta show the ways how I've done it, and I gotta be evaluated, it's, it's a real thing. That's, this is the hardest class to get into in Harvard, by the way, because you have to already be successful, and you have to engage in a real active business. So this is real life college, which is the best college for me, because, you know, um, I don't think I could relate to going to college or something that I, I haven't really ex touched yet, you know, because it's, it's, it's a big risk. You know, even though I'm not knocking anybody that go to college for future plans they have, but for me personally, going there and saying, okay, I can apply this to Monster, I can apply this to Reebok, I can, I can apply this, you know, to helping other people out as well, because since then, a lot of other people have been coming to me for help and, you know, um, shout out to J. Cole, that's, you know, trying to get into NYU right now, you know, making a couple of phone calls for him and, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people. L.A. Reid actually, I think, left, uh, left a label, his label at one point and got a Harvard MBA. Yeah. L.A. did the same class. Same class. He did the same class. It, it's, it was only critique. I spoke to L.A. before I went in. And it's crazy because <laughs> he gave me some great advice. Um, but the times has changed since he's been there. So I, was, I went in there with like his advice, and I'm like, well, damn, this thing done changed since he's been in there. This is a whole other type of flow. But it was great. He was, he was like one of, the, one of the people that I was reaching out to because I was nervous. I didn't know what to expect. You know, and one thing that they specialize in is making everybody feel comfortable. And one thing I learned about Harvard is that everybody's not as smart as you think they are. You know, when you look around the class and you look at, who hands go up and, and, and all these different things. Everybody, and, and the way people answer their questions, you know, uh, everybody's not as smart as you think they are. There's always room for people to grow. You know, I, I wanted to make sure I raised my hand at least two, three times a class every time because I'm being looked at in a different type of way. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm very different than my class.